And so that's where our conversation went next. He says, Russell, he says, you know, I do about 5,000 companies nationally with Zeters. And we, we help people push their equipment from portable toilets to hand wash stations to dumpsters, fencing, um, storage containers. I deal with everything. And he says, um, I said, well, John, I said, I'm looking for something that's a good transition for, for somebody that I don't have a lot of work experience. I'm not a tech guy. I, I don't have anybody in the waste industry. Give me something that's just hard work and dedication. And I can make something with it if I put the right people in place. And he says he thought about it. And um, to this point, I was thinking about a roll off a dumpster company. Because okay. I come from the dump truck background. And he says, no, 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 don't do that. He says, do a porter potty company. He says, people are shitting and pissing every day. 100%. Pooping and pissing every day is what he said. He says, um, the companies grow fast. He says, they're not complex. They just hard work and dedication. And um, he he told me, told me everything I needed. Um, he said, do this, do that. And he said, when you get it set up, come through, come back and holler at me. He says, I use about um, 10 companies locally in the Houston and surrounding areas. He says, if you buy brand new equipment, you hire right. He says, I'll source majority of the work through you. You'll become my preferred vendor. And um, but he says, you know, you got to go out and do what I said. Buy good new good equipment, get it started, and then hit me. So it took me about... You know, started in February, got to about August, September, got the company going, got the product. You know, we, we created the, the product we wanted to, to sell. You know, we found the real estate where we're going to house everything. To that point, my mom and them got rid of the trucking company. They became full time partners with me and the company. And we got it going, um, you know, August 3rd of 2020 in the midst of COVID. Yeah, wow. In, in the height of COVID. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Um, so said fast forward, we had it open for a month. We got a good foundation. Um, to that point, it was costing me about $8,000 a month to run the company. Um, we had one truck. We had about 150 toilets, portable toilets. We had about 75 holding, um, hand wash stations and a few waste tanks. And um, within that first month, we made like seven grand. Got you. I got a lot of questions. Yeah. All right. So first, with this relationship with John, because that's the plug. Shout that's out to John, because he, he was able to actually tell you exactly what to do because he saw it from, from the outside looking in. 100%. So he knew exactly, like, and he kept on stressing for you to get new equipment. New equipment. So why, why did he keep on telling you to get new equipment? What's so important about that? Just, just first, I want to talk about, about that. Like, why was he saying, make sure you get new equipment? What were some other things that he told you that you need to make sure you do to be successful in this industry? Right. So the benefit with John is John works with national. He, he's national. John works with companies in Hawaii, Vermont, Houston, wherever. Um, so John knows, he, he knows what's, what's needed and what's not needed. And, um, you know, through talking with him and everything, he says people are making money in this industry, but they're making money doing the bare minimum. He says their marketing is bare minimum. Their product is bare minimum. Their service is bare minimum. He says their safety is bare minimum, you know, safety awareness. So he was like, you know, if you buy brand new equipment, if you make it safety related, if you hire right, if you train right, typically in this industry, they train, they train their drivers two weeks before they send them out in the field. We train our drivers a month and a half. So instead of two weeks, they're really being trained eight weeks. So, um, you know, he was just giving me all the things to create what we say in our in our company, the, the new norm of the waste industry. You know, um, he was saying, Russell, outside of communicating, safety, service, outside of being dependable and consistent with those three things, he says, add technology to it. He says, there's tons of things you can add to it that won't that won't kill your business, that won't become too expensive. So that's when we came up with ideas to, you know, find different people that can add on to what we already had. Um, we created the orange portable toilets. I had some meetings with some um, owners of some Orange Theories, which is a fitness um, company. It's a nationwide company, a franchise company. And they told me why they use orange. They say it's awareness. They said it's safety related. They say it brings a, 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 a vibrant, a, a, a certain energy. To, to the facility, to the workout. They says it's everything we needed when we want to be seen. And um, I, I heard about that going to a business school. I went to a business school in Michigan at, at um, Ross, Ross Business School in Michigan. The NFL had uh, um, some type of um, a business academy there. And um, I got to meet with them, them, them franchisee owners at that point, and they just stuck with me. I had that, I met with them two years prior to, before even starting this company. 
Right. You know, and it just stuck with me that color. And I knew if I started something, that was going to be part of what I what I wanted to do. So once we found out the color we wanted to to, to do, then that's when we added the, the technology to it. Gotcha. So, OK. Yeah. OK, cool. So and, and real quick, you said John was in your phone. Why was John in your phone? How, how, how was he even in your phone? Right, right. So, you know, my wife, my wife worked for John right out of college. OK. okay. My wife worked for him. My wife, my wife is one of the original 15. You know, so, gotcha. um, you know, when I went to the NFL um, in 2013, like I said, my wife is older than me. She's two years older than me. So she originally came back to Houston at the college, got situated in her career. She worked for John. He, you know, it was his it was his his third, you know, third or fourth year of having Zeters. She was one of the original 15 to help him get it started. And um, that's when I, I was able to. Dope, um, dope, dope. OK, to cool. Connect. So you said. It took you, you, you talked to him in February and then it took you to about August yes, to sir. really get started. Yes, so sir. what was happening between between February and August? So between February and August, we're trying to create our product um, outside of creating our product um, and, 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 you know, you know, creating the portable toilets, which we are going to be our bread and butter, our brand, um, talking to manufacturers over pump trucks, learning about pump trucks, learning about the industry permits, certifications, um, talking to my mom about how do we want to build our business? Do we want to be um, a minority certification? Um, which ones do we want to have? You know, what do we want to apply for? You know, it, 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 it literally, we, we, we built the business from ground up. So from, you know, the, the things that make us legal, you know, from, like I said, the compliance. LLCs, the compliance, the permits, the health departments, and then creating the product, um, learning about the trucks, um, for example, with the trucks, our trucks are made in Grittin, uh, Grittin, uh, Virginia. <laughs> Grittin, okay. Virginia is two hours um, north of Charlotte. You okay. know, not too many people live in Grittin, Virginia. <laughs> but Amthor International, they make some of the best, you know, vacuum trucks on the West Coast. Um, so I flew me and my mom and dad um, out to North Carolina. We took a two hour drive from North Carolina to Grittin, Virginia. Um, we were able to walk through the factory. Um, learn about the trucks, learn how the trucks operate, learn how to best maintain, you know, maintain them, you know, doing different little things to help, you know, increase your service. So, like I said, we from, like you said, becoming, you know, legit from a paperwork standpoint yeah. to the learning about the trucks. And then, you know, once we got to the all that, we had to come back to Houston. We had to find our real estate. Where are we going to house all this stuff? You know, where are we going to put what's a good place you know, where we can have everything and it don't have, you know, they don't have any um, restrictions, you know, um, you know, we can have a port a waste company, you know, here some places you can't have a waste company because of the, you know, the, the government restrictions like and zoning and stuff zoning like that. and things like that. With us, we're in a non zoning area. We can have anything over here. It's a business area. It's a lot of, you know, um, you know, landscaping companies over here. There's a few other waste companies and dumpster companies around this area as well. So, you know, we have to find everything from what we're going to sell, how we're going to sell it, and how we're going to service it. Got you. So what was the, the first major purchase you guys made? Was it your product or was it the truck? And what was your initial investment in terms of capital to get the business started? 100%. So the first major thing was the product. The product being, uh, we went out and bought 150 toilets. Uh, we went out and we had to by the equipment to service the toilet. So again, we started off with 150 restrooms, a portable toilet truck, you know, vacuum truck, and we bought really a big truck that services two. So, you know, our initial investment was about 500 grand. Okay. Um, to get the company going from February into August, we spent about 500 K to get the company going. Um, and what I did was this, like I said, I'm an athlete. So like I said, you know, I went on, I, I start calling people in my phone. I start leveraging, you know, the fact that I was, an athlete and people are going to answer the phone for me. They're going to ask questions. So right. I'm talking to people that I've invested with people that I've done things with in the past. So how do I start this company? Do I do my own money? Do I go to the bank? And um, through conversations, you know, I, I was told to get a line of credit. So I had a, I had a good amount of money in, in, in Chase Bank. You know, Chase is one of the bigger banks in the, in the world. And I told them, I said, hey, I want to start a company. I said, but um, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to take my money out and I'm going to, you know, the investment account, I'm going to start the company. They say, OK, Russell, we don't want you to do that. You know, can we do anything? We want to keep your money like they want to keep everybody money so they can make fees and things off of it. It's right. business. Bank right. is big business, too. You know, and, you know, we got the talk and then they say, OK, we'll give you whatever you need to start the company. So once I did my research um, from the property to the equipment to everything, Told them we needed about half a million dollars. They gave it to me. 
And uh, from that point, you know, like I said, you know, we were able to add, you know, once we got the, the bulk of the money, everything else was on us to add to it, you know, me, myself. Got you. So you, you, you said the, f- the first thing you kind of go out there and get is the toilets or like the porta potties. Tell me about the process of, of that. How did you know? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you've seen a porta potty before, but did you have to construct these from like, did you have to manufacture them or mm-hmm. were they already made and you mm-hmm. said to add pieces onto mm-hmm. them? How did that go? When you, and how did you know what to order? All right. So um, talking to people, you know, like I said, being an athlete, le- you know, using it as leverage, I was able to call other operators, owners throughout the country. You know, um, guys from Sacramento all the way to Miami, just asking them how do they run their companies. And you know, I was able to learn about the manufacturers of the, the equipment. So, you know, like we went to Gritton, Virginia to get the, the, truck. the truck. You know, um, like I said, we had we work with a company um, called Satellite Industries. Um, Satellite Industries, they make every portable toilet that we have. Um, they make they probably make about 75 percent of the portable toilets nation i mean worldwide oh wow so um like i said we deal with them they're a major manufacturer we get our portable toilets from satellite industries we get our hand wash stations from satellite industries we get our restroom trailers from satellite industries um, we get our um our, our water tanks our waste tanks so majority of our pro- of our product we get from satellite industries and um like i said i call different people and they were the biggest company, and people said, you know, that they tend to they're able to have the quickest turnaround. Okay, you know, you know, when you're missing toilets and you got jobs coming up, you need somebody that can put them out and put them out fast for you. Now, when you purchase when you purchase these these toilets, is there like a mandatory minimum, like a, a minimum that you have to purchase? How does that work in terms of ordering, or can you just kind of like do it like a la carte, like right, I just right, need right. this much? How does that work? Right, right. So typically, we we purchase them by the truckload. So, like for example, with us, you know, to get a truckload of restrooms, you know, um, with freight and everything, travel included, that's about thirty grand. So, um, and how many how many restrooms? That's about thirty. Restrooms. Thirty, you said. Okay, that's about thirty restrooms. All right. So it comes down to almost about thousand dollars per restroom, a little bit under thousand, and then you throw some in there for like freight, you know, freight costs. So, like I said, you know, with us is outside of the initial cost it makes to make them, we add a little more to them on the technology side. And we have other perks in our restrooms, like hand sanitizers and things like that. So to get each one of our restrooms up and going, it's probably going to get us about $800 to get it going. You know, um, you know, once you get it up and going, you know, once you rent it out for three, four months, you made your initial investment. You know, um, we get anywhere from, you know, first first time you rent one of our restrooms, you're going to have a delivery and pickup fee. Um, you know, within that, you're going to have a service fee. You know, mileage is all going to be there. So you, typically, we typically get two hundred dollars off first first time rentals. After you keep it for a certain amount of time, it usually goes down anywhere from one twenty five to about one eighty five. Okay. You know, once you keep it on a regular basis, you know, we got some clients that keep these restrooms for four or five years as they build highways, intersections, skyscrapers. So, um, you know, that was a beautiful thing I found out once I found out how much it. It cost to make them. And we first opened, it cost me about $600, $700 to make them. Gotcha. But with inflation, things going up, supply and demand, we're up to about $800 now. But like I said, even with it being $800 now to make them, I still make my money back in three or four months. Got you. So your first, was your first order about 30? Is that, is that so kind my of? First, my first order was 150. Oh, it was 150. So, so my first order, they sent them to me on a truck. Everything was broken down and they came satellite send some manufacturers and they built them on the property. Okay, yeah, got you. Now, at property. this point, you already had your truck. At this point, and the truck was the truck was the next thing to come. Okay, so the truck is the next thing to come. Tell me about the truck, the specs on the truck, the type of truck you need. Tell mm-hmm. me a little bit about that. So you know, the beautiful thing about um, what we do is you know um, being in the, the the dump truck world prior to uh, you know as a, as a truck a truck guy you know like yourself and, and what you guys talk about the biggest headache is CDL. CDL drivers, points, not, you know, tickets, all type of things that come with CDL. So after doing my research and going through all this, I found out that you don't need CDL drivers right off the back. These pump trucks to operate them, they're big, they look big, but they just look big. When it comes to CDL, you know, those type of requirements, it's all about weight. And like I say, these trucks, our truck, our tanks are made from aluminum. It's very light, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the other truck, the biggest truck I have on my property is a 750 Ford. You know, it's still a, it's, it's, it's borderline commercial truck, but it's still an everyday truck. So um, 
once I found that how we can how we're gonna pull these tanks around, we didn't need the CDL drivers. You know that was a huge win. That was a huge win because, like I said, now your turnover ratio isn't as high. And now you don't have new guys trying to learn routes every day, learn how to operate trucks. You don't have to spend as much capital to um, train guys. When a guy's driving an eighteen wheeler dump truck, you got to train that guy for a few months. Right. In the in the typical standard training time in our industry, in the waste industry, with these pump trucks, two to three weeks. Got you. And you said so they're called pump trucks, right? That's pump the truck, thing vacuum trucks. Vacuum, vacuum trucks. Truck. Typically, how much do they cost? Can you tell us a little 100%. about that? One hundred percent. So my first one, we got a we got a two hundred a two thousand gallon truck. That was our very first truck. It's um it's pulled by a seven fifty Ford. So we got a brand new truck. Um, I, I wanted to, you know, I didn't have little to no experience in this industry, so I couldn't find anybody to pretty much finance anything that I had. So when I got the line of credit from Chase, I pretty much took that money and I strategically bought everything, cashed out on everything. Gotcha. I cashed out on 150 toilets. You know, that right there was about $150,000. The truck itself was about another $150,000, you know what I'm saying, to get the truck back and service it. And then getting all the other permits, certifications, we were initially we were releasing the property. So like I said, that helped us cut down on a huge, you know, chunk of change. So now, like I said, you know, once we got the trucks, we got the equipment to service the truck. I mean, we got the trucks, we got the product, you know, and we got a place to protect and, and, and get everything situated. Now the rest of the money, you know, about another 100000 went to the internal setup. You know, being able to get all the equipment, get the softwares, get the tracking systems, get all that in place. So, you know, once we finished and we got the company going in August, you know, pretty much all the money initially was spent to get it going. Gotcha, gotcha. So what what do you have to do, just to touch on this, in terms of compliance? I mean, it's not CDL, so you don't have to have right, a right, DOT right. number, or motor carrier right, number, right? right. right? So what, what, what compliance is there with waste that you have to kind of have, like certifications? Right, or how right, does right. That work? So the, the biggest thing is with the health department. You know, that that's our that's our police. They watching us. They trying to see, you know. Um, the good thing about what we do and why we're able to be in certain areas, like my company is in the middle pretty much of a neighborhood. Um, and the reason we're able to do that is because waste, since it comes from humans, is considered non-hazardous. So, um, like I say, you know, we don't have as many restrictions as a lot of other liquid waste companies have, like a grease company, a septic company, or some other people. So all we have to do is report the amount of waste that we're disposing at the waste treatment facilities. Um, we, 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 we report that on a manifest sheet. We give that to the waste facility. The waste facility then sends it to the health department. The health department checks to make sure that we're, we, you know, we're regulated, that we're meeting all the expectations. So it, it really wasn't too much. You get certified with the health department. You get all the certifications for the trucks. And again, these aren't CDL required trucks. So it's pretty much like you're going to go buy a truck across the street from a Ford dealership or something else. You know, you just got to make sure you got, you know, all the 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 license the license plates you know the registration all those little things and then like I said once the health department comes and makes sure there's no leaks your equipment is good and everything you're really ready to go 